Hi, everybody. Hello there. I'm Jerry. And I'm Linda. We're the newcomers. It's time for Mailbag Monday. I'll tell you what, Mondays come fast, don't they? Every day. Boom, boom, boom. But we don't dread them like we did when we were working. Right. Even though we liked our jobs, man, it seemed like you have a weekend and then tomorrow you've got to work and you got to get your lesson plans ready yeah. and everything. And so Sunday's shot. Sunday's shot and Sunday was always going, oh, I have to go back to work tomorrow. We love teaching, but it was, you know, it was a chore. Well, last week we talked to you all. For some reason, on both Facebook and YouTube, subscribers were being dropped from the ranks. You know, one day we would have 65,000. The next day we'd have 64,874. We couldn't figure it out. We still can't figure it out. But a lot of you went back and resubscribed. So thank you. Yeah. Don't let them do that. Yeah. Don't Whatever's let going do on. That. Well, on today's show. Can you be the first one to find the hidden message in today's show? That's right. While we're doing our show like normal. There are going to be a few clues in the background once in a while. Ah. If you can find the name of the mystery village that we're giving you clues to, what we want you to do is email it to villagesnewcomers at gmail.com. Put the answer in the subject line and make sure to include your name and everything. And you could be the winner of a t-shirt, a Jerry and Linda t-shirt she's Ooh. modeling today in the, the hot pink. And I do mean hot. Oh, yeah. And we're going to take a look at what happened 50 years ago. Yeah, we've got some uh, <laughs> listings of things as they were occurring 50 years ago, and it's kind of su surprising. Mm -hmm. What would you do if your neighbor's weeds got too high? And we went to the movies. We'll tell you all about it. All that and more. Hit it, Wally. Send us your questions. We've got your answers. Jerry and Linda's Mailbag Monday. We hope that you enjoyed Thursday's video. We took a cart ride. So many of you seem to enjoy those. We really like to do them, but we think that, you know, you'll get tired of it or you won't like it. So we don't do as many as we used to do. But we were in search of a bench pad that we had put out the call for. Actually, Dr. Tom Drabchik did, and you guys answered the call so well. It only took a couple hours. We raised enough money for that bench pad, $1,400. And we even have well, lots of money left to give uh, to a charity. So thank you for that. Yes. But we just found one. We did. We, we did. did. And we, we agreed on it. Uh, I know a lot of you got on Jerry's case because he, oh wouldn't, let, he wouldn't let me uh, pick the one I really It wasn't that I, I wouldn't let her. You see, you yeah. just got... You got so, uh, well, it's not that it, he didn't let me. It's that we weren't in agreement. I kind of liked it, and I liked it a lot. But we found one much better. Yeah, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> no dogs allowed in the astronomy pad. That's right. You could not take your furry friends in there to sit on Gizmo's bench if we, no. if we got that one. Plus, you couldn't see it from the road. Yeah. Plus, it was closed when we got there in broad daylight. Yeah. Locked up. Yeah. So we've got one now that's going to be accessible. You can pull your golf cart up and park, it's go sit beautiful. on the bench. and there's a... Pond, you could take a lunch and sit in a shelter house right there. Mm -hmm. It's a really good location. Yeah. It's going to be situated in the village of Richmond, yeah. which uh, is right across the Brownwood Bridge. Easy, good location. Yeah. We think you'll like it. Yeah. And, We're uh, excited about right it. Right now, they're in the process of printing up a uh, plaque mm -hmm. to put on that. And it, should, it could be four to six months yeah. before it's all ready. Right. But we will let you know. And we'll even have a ceremony where we go over there and invite all of you to come. Yeah. And, uh, you know, thanks to all of you. Yeah. Yeah. We, we always say it, that we have the best viewers. And we do. I know we do. We I mean, do. I mean, for but, some reason, great people watch us and we appreciate every yeah. single one of you. We feel loved because we love you. <laughs> Why do you have this out here? We are not going to have any. No, we're not going to have any of those today. No. <laughs> well, I definitely I have one problem right now. I'm doing this to my shirt today. It's going to be one of those days pulling on my shirt. <laughs> Let's start with our viewer video question. Good morning, Jerry and Linda. Uh, this is Claire from Long Island. Can't wait to fully recover and get down there and buy my house in the villages. Uh, my question for you this morning is, what do you know about Eastwood and what type of a place that's going to be? Is it going to be another square like the other squares or something different like the way sawgrass is um that's all and thanks for taking the time to listen to my question and see you when you get there bye wow good question claire 
Yeah, Claire, let me let me correct something. It's not Eastwood, it's Eastport. <laughs> and uh, there has been a lot of postings about the neat things they're going to have there. It's 250 acres of development yeah. there. They have a 1,000 meter lake there that you can actually have dragon boat races. Wow. I think it's, it's, I don't know if it's Olympic size, but I think it might be Olympic size. Yeah. There are walking trails, there are parks, there's going to have shopping, they're going to have restaurants. It's pretty cool. It's going to be neat. It's going to be exciting the next few years. Really is. There's going to be, a, I know there's going to be a new executive golf course there and a driving range and a, a practice facility like they have at Sarasota, which is really oh, wow. cool. So yeah. uh, I think there'll be a lot to do there. It's going to be a popular place, but thank you, Claire, for the question. This question is from Sean. From exercise to power assist, we see the environment appears perfect to ride on the paths there. And how is it in reality with all of the carts? We appreciate the feedback. Of course, they're talking about biking, electric bikes. Wow. We enjoy electric bikes. We have done this for, what, about three or three years now, maybe more. Yeah. And uh, we really enjoy riding our electric bikes. And there's room for you on the multimodal path. And um, we uh, think it's great for everybody. And the golf carts, so they're, they're good with us. Yeah, I, there are, are basically three places you can ride. The inner, inner neighborhood yeah. streets, mm -hmm. you just ride in the street like everybody else. There are no walking trails. There's no multimodal path. And it's usually very quiet. Yeah. So it's fine. We feel really good about riding within yeah. our own neighborhood. Within our neighborhood, yes. But to get to the multimodal trail yeah. or to get to some other areas we want to ride, we have to ride on main streets like Hillsboro Trail, Pinellas Place, and on roads like that, Charlotte Court, uh, Anne Marie, yeah. you have to ride in the bike lane, the golf cart lane. Yeah. That's when I'm the most nervous. Yeah. Actually, not for me, but for her, because people can lose concentration and drift over in your lane. All they'd have to do for, for people like me is to clip my handlebars. Yeah. Just a little tiny boom, and that's going to set you into the curb, and you're going to take a tumble. Yeah. That's why we got her that three-wheel bicycle. <laughs> we had one, and we're going to do an entire show on it yeah. because we're really excited about this one we got. But from the same brand of that beautiful, what color was it? Aqua? Yes, yes. Aqua yeah. bike, bicycle, yeah. tricycle. We now got a smaller version. It's called yeah. the Mini, and it fits her like a glove. Yeah. It's perfect. We're going to do a show on that. So those of you that think bikes are too big for you or you're unstable, this is a three-wheeler, totally stable. You're going to like to, yeah. you're going to love to see the show. Right, right. Yeah. But it, yeah, we ride. We love it. Be careful if you're on the main streets and riding. Be careful. I want to show you what uh, I found out that my golf clubs, I got some new clubs. I love them. Josh Babbitt sent me some golf clubs. What a guy okay. from the Hacker's Paradise. And I, I absolutely love them. But they make a sound, a funny sound. I want you to hear this. Clubs are all cleaned up, ready to go. Where do you think you're going? No. I'm just kidding. She's up. She'll let me play anytime I want. In fact, she encourages me to play. Yeah, let you play is kind of like. A Why do you encourage me to play so much? Why do you want me out of the house? Because no, I never get the house by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I want the house by myself sometimes. <laughs> anyway, that was fun, Jerry. And well, we have we have a thing called the the party times. It's a uh, it's a thing that tells how life was 50 years ago, and I love to look at these. Yeah. Now this is actually from 50 one and a half or 52 years ago. So it's a little more than 50, mm -hmm. but some of the things it says are crazy. Yeah. Well, what did you notice off of it? Well, uh, there, the 37th president was Richard Nixon. He was president 52 years ago. Yeah, oh, that, gosh, amazing. Time flies. There were 209 million people. Yeah, what do we have now? About 350 million or somewhere mm -hmm. in that neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Yikes. What things cost? Well, the minimum wage for working was $1.60 an hour. Wow. Back in 1972, <laughs> I had a job. I got 50 cents an hour to work at this job, believe <laughs> I, it or not. And you probably worked very hard. No, I didn't work very hard. <laughs> but, but I did get 50 cents. <laughs> Truth be known. Yeah. <laughs> a new house cost 
Twenty-seven thousand dollars, twenty-seven and a half thousand. Yeah, but for us, our first home was seventeen thousand. It was. It was what a cracker house. box! Yeah, yeah, it needed. It was a fixer-upper. Believe yeah. that. Yeah. Cost of gas. Fifty-five cents a gallon. Mm -hmm. Wow. The average monthly rent. One hundred and sixty-three dollars. One hundred sixty. Fifty years ago, one hundred and sixty-three dollars. Yeah. Oh, that's one hundred sixty-five. Huh? Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, and lots of the eggs were 50 cents a dozen. Wow. They have not really gone up that much, have they, when you consider that? Well, here's a good one. The stamp cost eight cents mm. a piece. Oh, wow. I'm still thinking about those chickens, though, that lay an egg every day. And, you know, you can buy a dozen eggs here for a dollar sometimes. Mm. Eight cents an egg. Yeah, ah. yeah. We're, we're, we're a lot higher than that right now. <laughs> well, during COVID, it was really, really high. So, yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. It was almost six. Six dollars. Well, but now it's not that high. It's not. <laughs> no, high. it's bound about okay. two and a half. All right, and some of the sports things that went on. You can talk about the sports. Well, a movie ticket. It says one seventy. Now, right now, when you go to the movies, it's a minimum of ten bucks here. Mm -hmm. We can go on the senior day for less. Mm -hmm. But I remember going to the fifty cent movies. You remember that? Yeah. You could go for yeah. fifty cents. Dollar movies. I do that. Better than dollar that. movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of the st stars that were born in nineteen seventy two. Sofia Vergara. Yeah, Dwayne Johnson. No, let's keep talking about Sofia Vergara. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Dwayne Johnson. That's the Rock. I yeah. like him. Yeah. Is that Eminem? Eminem. Cameron Diaz. Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck is uh -huh. is over fifty years old. Wow. Wow. There you go. Yeah, lots of people. Look. Gwyneth Paltrow. Mm -hmm. Those are called Gen Xers. Gen Xers. In 72. Yeah. We are the baby boomers. Yeah, we, we're baby boomers. Yeah. Uh, some of the movies at the time were Deliverance, The Godfather. That was a good one. The Poseidon Adventure, Jeremiah Johnson. Uh, the Getaway. Uh-huh. And Lady Sings the Blues. That deliverance was a classic. Mm -hmm. well, so was the Godfather. I mean, yeah. how holy cow! And the Poseidon yeah. Adventure. Yeah. Don't watch that if you're going on a cruise. And on the radio, American Pie. That was a good one. Without Don McLean. Don, without you. Nilsson, Harry Nilsson. The Candy Man. So Sammy Davis Jr. Yeah. Uh, Home again. Alone again. Alone again. <laughs> Gilbert O'Sullivan, naturally. Ah, uh, okay. Finish. First time ever I saw your face was at the top of the mm -hmm. charts. So anyway, that's things. fun to reminisce. Yeah, and the average income in 1972, $11,800. I don't believe that. I don't believe it was that high. My first job was in 1978. Yeah, the, our first teaching. My first real job. Real. And yeah. uh, I was making less than 10000 yeah. 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 Starting teachers back then were about 9000 Oh, here's some slang words from the 70s. Did you use these words? Right on. Yeah. Right on, man. Yeah. yeah. Psych, when you fool somebody, oh, yeah. psych. I remember psych. Far out. Oh, yeah. oh, well. <laughs> Dream on. Dream on. Groove it. Oh, that's kind of neat. I took a clip from a local next door post. Next door is an app that you can get that kind of links your neighbors together. Mm -hmm. If you want to talk about the bobcat in the neighborhood or, yeah. or, or problems flooding in there that you want to report or delivery man or a suspicious character. Here's one. A uh, person says, I'm very upset that my neighbor's lawn is unsightly. The weeds are out of control, so I visited community standards. I asked them to look into the issue, but that's not their responsibility. She said, they only come around if the weeds are eight inches long. What am I supposed to do? Get a ruler? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's well, true. that is a dilemma. If you have a neighbor, especially if you have one that's absent, you know, maybe they live, come here, maybe they're a snowflake. Yeah. And they just don't keep up on their yard work. Yeah. You can report that to the Standards. deed compliance yeah. office and they will send somebody out. But she said it has to be eight inches long. But I'm going to tell you what, in Florida, it doesn't take very long for a weed to get to be eight That's inches true. tall. You know, we had a neighbor recently with one that was that big between cuttings and they cut every Thursday. Yeah. yeah. Got that tall between cuttings. It definitely depends on rain too. If you have depends a on rain. a lot of things. But yeah, first thing, knock on your neighbor's door and say, hey, you know, first of all, you've got weeds in your yard. Second of all, I don't want your weeds in my yard. They, When they get to a certain size, they produce seeds, boom, they blow in your yard, you get weeds. Mm -hmm. Even when the grass cutter cuts it, throws those weeds over in your yard. Yeah. yeah. So don't be afraid to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. You know, now we're getting back into that uh, reporting business when you yeah. go and report them and nobody likes that. 
but sometimes it has to be done. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate after I talk to the person if they don't correct it. Yeah. You know, cause yeah. you, you spend a lot of money on your house. You want it to look nice. You want your yard to look nice. Yeah. And that's a drawback. Yeah. This next question is from Rick and Bonnie. With all the geckos running around, how does a homeowner get rid of them if they get into your house? Uh, we read online that a gecko could live inside your house for years. Oh. Okay, well, <laughs> first, first of all, I like to, to educate a little bit. You could have geckos, but most likely you have the American anole lizard, A-N-O-L-E. They're cute. They have a little throat that puffs out when they're, when <laughs> yeah. they're yeah. I guess they're courting, I don't know. Yeah. And we do have geckos too. We have them on our concrete stucco yeah, house sure. outside. They come out at night. Yeah. They have the yeah. little suction cuppy hands. And they climb. They're t they're small. They're this big. Yeah. They're little. I think they're the ones that come out at night. The geckos more. And right. The the lizards are in the daytime. They could all get in your house, but we've never had a gecko in our house. We've had the anal lizards. We've had a gecko in our garage a couple of times. Oh yeah. Because yeah. they probably get on that garage door, and when you open the door, you know, they yeah. fall off, get mm -hmm. off, whatever. But they're lizards. They don't hurt a thing. Most often, it's a death sentence when they come in your house. Yeah. We find them dead on the floor. Yeah. yeah they, do. they don't they, have anything to eat. They have drink, and they can't get back out, and yeah, they die in your garage, and that's sad. We had a letter from, from a lady that said she puts a plan on her lanai so that they'll have a place to go and eat and get water and okay. everything. It's pretty nice. All right. But they're, they're cute. I like them. Don't yeah. worry about those lizards and, yeah. and, and, and geckos. <laughs> Each week, we do either an Ask Amy or a bubble wrap. To this week, it is Ask Amy, and she's got some legal advice. Here we go. Hello. So I'm going to talk today about safe deposit boxes. We have a lot of um, probates where you have to include that in the probate, and it's really not necessary. If you add a co-owner to a safe deposit box, they'll have access to it when you pass away. If you have a revocable trust, you can ask the bank if they'll put the safe deposit box in the, in the revocable trust. Just giving someone a key does not give them access to that box when you die. So the other thing to consider is do you even need a safe deposit box? If it's just paper in there, it's probably not needed um, since most of our documents now are digital. You could have a safe, um, little safe in your house if you wanted to. But understanding that a safe deposit box is subject to probate, no one will have access to the things in it until they go through probate, which might not be worth it in paying an attorney like us just to get your personal representative paper. Um, the other thing that we kind of try to get people to do is to contact us. Like, you need to make sure that if you're a client of ours or you have a local attorney, you need to tell your family to immediately contact the attorney before they go into the bank for these safe deposit boxes. Because if they cannot locate the will, then the bank has to open it to see if the will is in the safe deposit box. So we will tell them this before they go in and try to have access to the safe deposit box. So again, we are not big fan of, of safe deposit boxes for that reason that is subject to probate if you don't have a co-owner. Um, and also the most of the safe deposit boxes are you know, within banks that are closed at night or on weekends. So we definitely don't like our estate planning documents in safe deposit boxes. So hopefully that clarifies any questions that you may have had or didn't think about regarding safe deposit boxes. Have a great one. Their office is up in Oxford. That's just it's almost connected to the villages. It's right there up in the, what would that be? The the northwest corner yeah. of the villages right. mm -hmm. off of 301. And uh, just a nice lady. And thank you for being with us once in a while to answer our questions. We appreciate it. One question came in and it wanted to know just how many people live in the villages. That is a poser. Mm -hmm. It's a tough one to answer because what does it mean to live in the villages? Do you mean full-time residents that we call? Uh, full time? Uh -huh. What? What? Frogs? That's what we call them frogs. Well, They're here till they croak. Yeah. And there's snowbirds which come down sometimes for six months and go up north for yeah. six months. And there's snowflakes and we know a bunch of them that come down as they please. They might have a month free here and a month yeah. free there. They come down anytime. So how many of those get counted in the population? Well, I think the village just counts them all. Yeah. Well, there's even a question because there's homes for rent and they, people don't even live in that house, but somebody owns that house. They probably count the homeowner as, mm -hmm. but they don't they actually live, live here. Yeah. 
So the actual number that, that we've read is 151,000. That was of the last census, 151,000. More coming every single day. And we think those are everybody, the snowbirds and the regular residents. Mm -hmm. We don't know. If anybody has a better answer, please write in and let us know and we'll, we'll correct it. But 151,000, we're getting up there. Yeah, yeah, we certainly are. This next question is from Ellen in Oxford, Ohio. When we did our lifestyle visit, we saw these huge birds on the side of the road. They look like ostriches, only smaller. What are they called and are they dangerous? You know, we thought the same thing when we saw them and went, whoa, what is that? Well, those are sandhill cranes and they do look like ostriches. They are quite big. In fact, when I stand next to them, they are almost <laughs> some of them with me. They get three to four yeah. feet tall and, and probably the, the biggest and, and yeah. most mature ones can be probably up to your chin almost. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're really beautiful birds. They've got a bright red head and yeah. a big black beak. Mm -hmm. And we see them every day, yeah. every single day. You know, they're eligible to be hunted a lot of places in the wow. planet. So they know they're safe yeah. here in the villages. Yeah. We see a lot of them on the golf courses because we went to a tee box one time and there we're standing right there. They like to dig around in that on, the, on those nice greens. <laughs> yeah, they're what you call omnivorous. You know, they'll eat seeds and things like grass, but they like bugs. They like uh, yeah. grubs and worms. And, yeah. and we've seen them down at the water before. I don't know if they're any good at fishing like the uh, egrets are, <laughs> yeah. but, but they do it. But they're cool birds. Yeah. You know, I hate to think that people hunt them somewhere. Yeah. They're known as the ribeye in the sky. <laughs> and people do. Uh, their wingspan, six to seven feet, probably just like mine. Oh, wow. I used to see them coming down the street when I used to walk Gizmo down the street. I can hear this whoosh, whoosh sound. I went, oh, here they come. Yeah. Right behind it's us. It's beautiful. You can, And, and they, they honk. Yeah. And they dance oh, when, you, yeah. when you find them out. Sometimes they're dancing yeah. and flopping their wings. Right. They're really cool. They uh, live, they can live 20 years. They wow. can live 40 years. They wow. live, tw uh, you know, wow. 20 to 40 years. And right now, in springtime, we're seeing babies. I haven't seen too many, but people have told me, oh, did you see the baby? And they're really, really, really cute walking around, but they grow fast. They are <laughs> darling. I love them. I'm yeah. glad they're here. Yeah, I am too. Jeff and Shauna sent us a letter, and it's one that you'll want to take note of if you live or, or are planning to live here. I wanted to share with you that Jeff and I were attacked by those darn no seams inside our lanai the other night. Oh. We were both covered with those round red spots. Luckily, I had some Benadryl gel in the fridge, cooling, soothing, and anti-itch. Trust me and get yourself a tube. Mm. The next morning when they woke up, the spots were gone, but those are called no seams. They're a biting miniature fly. They're so small. It's a fly? Some people call them a midge. Oh. It's and a fly or a mosquito? It's a fly. It's a it's in the fly family. Oh. But they will go through a regular screen, like the old screen doors we had growing up. Mm -hmm. They can they're so small they can come through a regular screen. Wow. But you can buy a tighter weave, which is better at keeping them out, mm -hmm. because they can make your life miserable. Yeah. However, we're not bothered by them here. No. There's a regular spraying program that uh, the neighborhoods all have in the villages that seem to knock down the mosquitoes and uh, the midges. Yeah. There's a number you can call if you think the mosquitoes are out of control in your neighborhood. Yeah. And they will dispatch a crew. They'll come at night in a truck that sounds like a, a motorboat. And uh, it's, it'll be blowing out a, a fog, a fog of, <laughs> of uh, I'd like to say poison, but they say it's not harmful to humans. Or dogs, they said, too. Yeah. So, But it's a good idea to have that benefit. A magic handy. fog. A magic fog. That selectively destroys the mosquitoes. I like that. Well, it's time for entertainment. This week at the Savannah Center, starting tomorrow, is a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. And that's on for three days. It's on the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of this week. Sounds like a fun show. And on Saturday, on April 6th, is Simply Sinatra. And those tickets go $33 on, and on up. And uh, whoever, everybody likes Frank Sinatra, so his music's going to be great. And that's all I have. Well, coming up in, in a couple of weeks, the Guess Who are coming to town. Yeah. You know, Albert Flasher. Those is it these eyes? I mean, yeah. guess who? I yeah. mean, they are they were a great band from the uh, I don't know eighties, seventies, yeah. yeah. back then. And also coming is uh, Leonid and friends, and they're 
a brass group with rock guitars and everything. They sound a lot like the group Chicago. Yeah, they were great. And uh, it won't be too long until Johnny Mathis is here, you know. That's coming in May. Oh, hit the heartthrob. Oh, chances are that'll be a great show. Yeah, it will be really, really, really good. A lot of great great performers come to the Sharon, the Savannah Center. And don't forget that 365 days a year, you get great entertainment in the town squares. It looks like we're paid by the villages. No, we are not. We are not. We just don't want you to miss out and see these don't great miss shows. Out. A lot of we love shows. it. We've been going more than ever to the town squares. We have been going, and you you can see us there, and we enjoy talking to you. So uh, we enjoy going down there and seeing people and listening to the music. We usually don't stay four hours. They, they usually yeah. perform five to nine. Yeah. You know, we might get there at six, six and leave at seven, seven, but we come for a little bit of it. Just a little bit. So we enjoy it. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's time for At the Movies with Jerry and Linda. This week we went to see Arthur the King. Yes, and that stars Mark Wahlberg, and he's a great actor. We saw it at the uh, Old Mill Playhouse in Sumter Landing, yeah. and it was a it was a jam packed audience that day. Make sure you get there on time. Yeah, get there on time for that to, movie. We had to sit on the you, top row. We couldn't get a. Uh, we had another couple with us, and we could not sit together. Yeah. We had to split up. Yeah. So it's a story. Arthur the King is the story of an adventure racer. Adventure races are where you're you're kayaking, you're bicycling, and you're orienteering, you're chopping mm-hmm. through the forest, and and it's a long race. Uh, and this aging athlete is giving it one more go. That's Mark Wahlberg, and he has to get a sponsor, and he's not in uh, not easily able to do that. So he gets one, and it's a big deal. I mean, this is his last gasp, mm-hmm. and during the race. This, he befriends a, a, a mangy mutt, an old dog, and he feeds it. And the rest of the movie is about this dog just the mysteriously shows up probably 50 miles into the race yeah. and stays with the team yeah. and actually saves a life. And it's a, it's a tearjerker. It, it is. I cried hard. Did you? I cried boo-hoo. The couple next to me, I thought, oh, oh, they're going to have to take Linda out. Yeah. Yeah. It was a boohoo moment for Linda. But anyway, it was a wonderful movie. Yeah, you know, it's a feel good movie, or is it? I don't want to give it away. <laughs> uh, but it's good. Arthur the King, Mark Wahlberg, yeah. super job. Yeah. Uh, it's all about victory and defeat and loyalty and friendship and yeah. man's best friend. <laughs> so we think you'll like it. I'm going to give it a big thumbs up. Thumbs up. Right there. Up. Yep. You too? I'll give it two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. All right. Arthur the King. Yeah. It's time for Out and About. This week we went to Costco, and boy, was that a trip. <laughs> well, that turnpike, that infernal blasted turnpike oh, was backed up. It, my it, it gosh. said, when we left here, it said 55 minutes. 35 miles, I think, something like that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it took over, it took two hours. Almost two hours. And to get going, there. It kept saying, okay, it's going to take longer, it's going to take longer. And then at one point, we were going three miles an hour. And no, and zero miles an hour. I mean, we were. We were like, but anyway, yeah. we did get there, and I was hungry when we got there. We got there about one o'clock p.m. Yeah. And I was ready to, to get me one of those famous hot dogs. <laughs> they have a dollar fifty hot dog and Coke combo, and it's one of those jumbo dogs. Yeah. And you, you know, you put that uh, perfect line of red creamy ketchup on there. I know a lot of people like that yellow stuff on there, but I don't. <laughs> but uh, that's what I had. I had the kind of, the hot dog was really good. It was a good hot dog. Yeah. They don't sell them there though. Yeah. They sell smaller dogs, but I wanted the jumbo. Yeah, you know? I mean, in, in the in the in the store, you can't buy them in the store in the meat department. So I don't know why they don't sell. Them. And, and we had a communication problem. She wanted one of those rotisserie chicken meals for lunch. And I, I said, well, you just get the you get the whole chicken and you bring it up here and you can eat it. <laughs> but that's not what she meant. She got a chicken Caesar salad. How was that? It was delicious. Uh, it's really enough for two people. They have a ton of lettuce. They give you this little styrofoam thing with lettuce and then some chicken and the Parmesan cheese on top. And they give you some Caesar dressing, salad dressing. 
It was, it was enough for good. two people, wasn't it? Was it was enough for two people. So, that, but it wasn't enough for you, was it? You also got a piece of cheese pizza. <laughs> I think that was a mistake. Somehow it ordered two meals for me. I had a <laughs> piece of pizza that was like that big. It was humongous. And uh, yeah, I threw away half of each one of them. <laughs> what, uh, what do you think of the pizza? Pizza was good. Um, I liked it better than the pepperoni for some reason. I don't know why, but it was, it was good. It was good. I remember I took my students on a field trip one time and we went to a pizza restaurant mm -hmm. and you know how kids, they, it's peer pressure, I guess they copy each other. This is not an exaggeration. The first table of kids, I let them order whatever they want, order whatever you want. Whoa. And they got large cheese pizza. So they go to the second group of kids. What do you want? I want a large cheese pizza. The third table, large cheese pizza. Cheese, cheese. That's what they got. I wouldn't eat a cheese pizza if you paid me. You know, I want some <laughs> sausage and I want some green peppers and you could even put bacon on there and some ham and yeah, maybe yeah. some onions. That's a supreme. That's, That's what I want. You. That's, That's what I want. The supreme. Well, cheese pizza is the cheapest. <laughs> That's those kids didn't care. About no, that. they didn't. But a large for each one of them. Oh my lord! Well, we bumped into a lot of people. You know, uh, they there are lots of villagers yeah. down there, evidently. Yeah. And I stopped counting at ten. I was going to say, "Hey, how, let's see how many of our friends are down here." And we we stopped at ten, and there was more than that. Yeah, we enjoyed And so it was really food. good. Yeah. Uh, my meal a dollar fifty. Her chicken <laughs> Caesar sandwich was six ninety nine. Yeah. Her piece of pizza was a dollar ninety nine. Yeah. And uh, it was good. So the total for all of us to, for for me to eat a half a lunch and her to eat two and a half lunches was eleven dollars and thirty one cents, and it, it was good. <laughs> all right, it's time for that word jumble, Jerry. Well, last week was I guess the easiest word jumble in history. Uh -huh. uh, the clue led you to the answer sinkholes. Mm -hmm sinkholes yeah. and we don't see many sinkholes here but they get a uh, you know their reputation gets yes. flowing and yeah. and there are some but this happens then we have a new puzzle for you this week and the clue is common quiet and less tiring and you can see i've included the spaces for you today i'm not sure if this is a hard one or not Remember, if you get it, let us know you got it. Don't put the answer down below or people will look down there and get the answer and then they'll jump up and down saying, I got it, I got it. I got it, I got it. And now it's time for Sweet and Salty. I always get to do the salty. I'm well aware that I'm not quite as lovable as some parts of our staff here, but... Uh, this was written by Et, or E.T. <laughs> Bunch of puppets, village controlling your life. Hmm. Puppets. That's a, that is a, just a, an unbelievable rumor, like all the other rumors, that one of, to say that our, our HOA, which we don't have an HOA, controls everything. They don't. They want to say that our women are mindless robots that live to serve their masters. They aren't. No. No. We, we we're just like everybody else, and uh, we're not controlled any more than you are wherever you are. I mean, hey, E.T., e doesn't your mom control when you eat and and uh, when you go to bed and uh, all that sort of thing? Hmm? Sweet. Sweet. All right, this is from Jean H. Hello, Lyndon Jerry. I live in Virginia, but I enjoy your channel immensely. Jerry is always upbeat, and Linda is such a sweet lady. Mm -hmm. I love your banter, and you have expanded your channel to include many interesting guests and topics. I am proud of you. Oh, oh. <laughs> I feel like I had a school teacher tap me on. The yeah, that's head. nice. Somebody's proud <laughs> Thank of you, us. Jean. Uh, we try to be upbeat and happy. Um, we are. Yeah, yeah. One viewer <laughs> said I don't smile enough, and uh, <laughs> Jerry's trying to Jean smile. says I'm upbeat. <laughs> Thank you, Jean. <laughs> Now it's time for those shout outs. What a week. Yeah. You know, I was approached, we were approached by Dr. Tom Drabchik and he he took the bull by the horns and he wanted to do something for Gizmo wow. and, and for us. And uh, he spearheaded the look for that pad and, and he came up with a GoFundMe idea and he did that. 
Yeah. And it wasn't an hour after I announced it on Facebook that we were there at the at the allotted number. I mean, it was probably a couple hours. You know, this started uh, at a driveway party yeah. in, on St. Patrick's Day, and here it is two weeks later, and it's happened. Yeah, like we said, we've already oh got gosh. it signed, sealed, and del so not they, delivered, but it's signed and yeah. sealed. Yeah. Uh, there'll be four to six months. What a wonderful... But thank you all. And the reason I bring it up at this stage is usually we do that scrolling. Mm -hmm. And I would put all your names on there, but 86 of you actually chipped in during that brief time period. It was open. Wow. And so many more said they wanted to give later. And of course, we turned it off. We're not, we weren't trying to make yeah. money. No. We just wanted to pay for the bench. And uh, we actually raised $2,020. And yeah. that money is going to go for the bench and the extra is going to go to a charity. And we have the best people, but I can't put all the names of the people that contributed and the ones that tried to contribute. Yeah. So we're, we're just putting some friends of our channel up there. Mm -hmm. Thanks to every single one of you. We know who you are. Mm -hmm. We saw the list. We saw the donations. And we thank you so much. And we know there are lots of others of you that would have yeah. if you could have. And it's, it's so special because uh, Gizmo was such a special part of our life. And, and we just really appreciate all of you. And, and uh, we love you. <laughs> we will have a dedication when it yeah, all happens. And, you know, he was a special dog. They all are, though, aren't they? I they mean, are. dogs are yeah. wonderful. Mm -hmm. We don't have one right now, and uh, I think we're going to try to get some traveling out of our system before we get another one if we do. But they're amazing animals, and they become part of our families. Yeah. And, you know, that's another reason why that astronomy pad was absolutely off limits because yeah. no dogs allowed. No dogs allowed no. there, so we can't have the furry friends come visit. Yeah. All right. Here are Bob, Charlene, and Caroline. We bumped to them down at Costco. Yeah. They were loading up on healthy foods. They were. Jerry was going, you all buying asparagus? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, they had all kinds of weird stuff in their cart. Uh, no, that was great. Uh, yeah. That was a nice, nice family. Nice family. Well, this is Adam and Sue Nelson, uh, two more of our great folks that we met down at Lake Denham at that block party last week or a few weeks ago. And this is Marilyn and her husband, Mr. Hobgood. <laughs> She didn't tell us your name, Mr. Hobgood. <laughs> but they came all the way from the Florida Keys through the villages on their way back to North Georgia. Wow. Where they stopped in the villages and they had dinner at Bella Vista. They said it was fantastic. We need to go there. We too. haven't been there. It no. sounds like an out and about yeah. waiting to happen. Well, this is my friend Marcy and her husband Tom sent us this picture. And he says they've been watching us for five years and they came down on a lifestyle visit in 2022 and recently were able to buy the very same house they stayed in at their lifestyle visit in the Alden Bungalows, which is where we stayed. That would be so cool, wouldn't it? I mean, you've stayed yeah. there a week. You uh -huh. already know the ins and outs. So yeah. when you're making an offer on that home, you, you don't have to hold back. You know. Yeah. That is great and yeah. a good story. So thank you, Tom, for sending that. Yeah. This is Steve and Tammy. They're from Massachusetts, and they live with that great bunch down there in Lake Denham. We ran into them two different times this week. In fact, we ran into several Lake Denham people in Costco. Yeah, we did. And how about this? This is Robert Garcia. He made a hole-in-one down at Marshview. How about that, Jerry? Are you kind of jealous? Well... <laughs> You know, it sounds like bragging, Robert, when you send your picture in, but no, I'm just teasing. It's wonderful. She, you know, she had one and she still I rubs it in. <laughs> but another cool twist to the story, when we were picking out that pad for Gizmo's bench, right. a gentleman rolls by and he recognized us and stopped and ran over and introduced himself. Mm -hmm. And it was him. It was Robert Garcia. And we had this picture taken with him. Yeah. And uh, he's a really nice fellow. So That was fun to me. Thank you. I guess that's going to do it. You know, it went fast, didn't it? It went fast. But we hope you enjoyed today's show. Remember that if you have questions, send them to us. And I'll tell you what would be great. It'd make my life easier if you put your subject of your question in the subject line. Yeah. That would help me know what's what it yeah. is. Because honestly, the, the emails pile up and that way I could make sure I get the, the right. ones that are more That's pertinent right. off of there. Right. So thank you. Send your questions. Send your viewer videos. Yes. Remember to film it in landscape. And really, questions about the villages, questions about Florida, questions about the heat, yeah. golf carts, questions about us. Anything is fair game. Yeah. If we don't want to answer it, we won't. <laughs> so uh, so any questions you have, feel free to shoot them down to us. We love those viewer video questions. And if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to our channel and follow us on Facebook. Until next time. See you when you get here.